Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will discuss about the servlets and JSP as a two level architecture in a web server and in user orientation. We will discuss all the servlet problems, the servlet support, life cycle and all the sessions of servlet. Next we will know what is in JSP, do the client side programming and also we will know about Ajax. As we have seen in the two-way architecture on an application development, the application and web serve being in the combined first server that is being served by this server. Now when the server is serving the web and application server together, so we need to get the application module combined into the web server. So we can do this by using a servlet. A servlet actually serves as a server as well as an application program. So the servlets that we mostly use in the Java servlets widely in our web applications, we will see that how to program using a Java servlet. Say for the example that I want to fetch a form from the username and then use that student or instructor the person is. So the person query the name, I will use this as a server applet or the servlet. When we talk about servlet, it is the programming language Java that we will use the syntax to. See there, we are adhering all the syntaxes of Java in this servlet programming. So it is none other than a Java program. See, I have imported three files, the IO file, the servlet file, and the Java servlet HTTP file. That means the three files I will need is the input-output Java, the servlet for Java, and the HTTP combined with the Java. That means the transfer protocol I will use as an HTTP. See, I am using a class parson query servlet as extending or inheriting from the HTTP servlet. See, Java doesn't support any term known as inheritance, so we generally extend that all the features of the class HTTP servlet will be served in my servlet, a person query servlet. So that means the form we have used the input box as the person query. Now I have transferred it to a class person query servlet. Now I am using a function do get that will fetch the request for the servlet as well as the response rs for the servlet. I am using the keywords rq and rs as variables for the request and response from the HTTP servlet. Now it throws an error that is a servlet exception and this IO exception. So the servlet exception serves for if there is any problem while connecting to the server or the application. An IO exception is for handling the IO input output exception. Now I am using this response to use the set content type function. The set content type function actually set the content type, that is, the text I will use as an HTML content. Now I'm using the rs.getwriter to get in the print router id model. Now when we are talking about the print router, that is the out variable here, we are fetching the writer part or the writer that will be used to get all the information from the user to write or upload it to the server.
Now I have introduced the HTML format of the query result that will be the title to our response. I am using the response variable out or the get writer that we can choose from the response variable and use it to as write of the title as the response. I'm using the string person type or PT to get from the request. Why request? Because it is being given by the user, not done from the server side. So it is the servlet's applet part that is helping with the request to get the parameter from the person type screen. So we can choose that the parameter value, say for Ashim, Mala, or any other card scheme that we will input as the name or the person type as an input on the stream. Same goes with the name field. Now, if the person type equals to student, that means the person type can be of two, student and instructor. So if the parameter we got and matched with the student, then we will perform the next. Now I'm using the table to give out the result. See, I have used the JDBC, that is the Java database connectivity, to connect the Java programming with the databases that we need to fetch the data. Now when we are saying that JDBC is connected to the database, now we can use the table filled on the HTML to actually get the result displayed on the web browser. So now the table border it will have and the column, three column it will display. Now that I have made all the table information heading that the ID name and department. Now I need to select it from the student and put it into the database. Now for every result, that means the for loop will go on go for every result that we have in the database and match with the student type. Now we will put the information into the table, then close the table. Or else we can see that for instructors, we need to same write all the documents. Now let's look at this one that I have made the body close. And after that, the out variable, which were used to get right, that means to write the data to the result, has been closed with the close function. So this is an example of a Java servlet. Next, we will talk about the Java servlet stations. A Java servlet station starts from another one and then ends with another body. Say for an example that we have mentioned and a cookie. What is a cookie? Cookie is something that the information we use very frequently while feed it into the information on the database. Say suppose the username and password to login of a social network site to a banking sector or any other site that we use. We save it as a cookie or often the web browser gives us a tag that to use it as a cookie. So if we save it as a cookie, then we need not to feed the data every time we want to log into the site. So the session is after you have logged in and finally when you have logged out. So there is another way to actually stop the session on the servlet explicitly. And we can do it with a destroy function. So if we use the destroy function in a servlet, that means you use ds taro ey, that is a destroy to the servlet. And after that, you write it here. So your session will be completed 
without any prior information to the user. When there will be a destroy command, it will destroy or deploy all the sessions to it. Now that goes with the servlet lifecycle. When we talk about servlet lifecycle, that means the span to which a servlet is active. So the servlet is active from the server side as well as on the client side. When we say that the servlet is active from the server side, then we are considering as in servlet lifecycle. So the servlet lifecycle starts from a login to the logout or a servlet station span of life. Now, for a span to start with, we can get that in which session the servlet is in using the get session and also set the attribute of a session using the set attribute of session. It is written like this. That means the user is given the name user and it is set using the set attribute function of the session variable. Now we can easily get the session or in which particular session the servlet is using the get session function. We can even get the username that is using the user value as an option within get attribute of that particular session. Now that we have discussed servlet, we should move to the next part. We know that the Java programming will be an extensive and also an expensive way to program all the servlet that is the application part to in an application environment or a server environment. So we often use two sites like the server side scripting and client side scripting. So when we're using the scripting language, that means we are using the programming languages syntax into combined with an HTML syntax. So for the server side scripting, we have the ASP that is the application server page and most oftenly we use the Java server page or JSP to design the server side scripting. Now what is the basic difference between a server side and a client side scripting? In server side scripting that is valid while the request has been received by the server and now the request will be performed or automated or executed by the server using the server side scripting. While being in the client side scripting, it is absolutely the client's web browser area that will use the scripting language to perform while requesting for a session to the server or back the result into the server or the web browser that the client is using. So it is two different way that the JSP could be used as a server side or in a client side scripting. First, we will use the server side scripting as in JSP. We will see a small snippet on which we can use this as a server side scripting. See, as I have told you previously that the server side scripting allows the programming languages syntax to be combined just within a simple HTML document. Well, it can use the HTML document or the cascading style state or any other style sheet like CSS, XML, but the basic one being the HTML. See, I have been used this one as a normal HTML part. Now from starting here, percentile sign means we are actually enclosing a Java programming language syntax now onwards in an HTML tag. Now it becomes an HTML tag referring to the previous program request parameter to use the get parameter function. If the name is null, then we are printing hello. or else we are saying hello to the name that we fetch from the get parameter. So it is the basic syntax to use in a server side scripting, use the percentile sign and then use the construct. Now every statement here is included into the braces other than the keyword if and else.
After that, we finish just our normal HTML content with the body and HTML finish tag. Now let's move to the client side scripting. Now the JavaScript can be used inside the HTML as a client side scripting and it often follow the standard known as DOM or document object model. First we will see an example how to write in client side scripting. See, as the script type, I have used the text JavaScript. That means we will use a text format for the JavaScript as a scripting language at the client side. Now we should use the function keyword before any function name to start with in the JavaScripting. So I am using the validate function now to validate the data from the user side. Now I have used the get element build function of the document variable to use a value or the credit that is a variable to actually get the element on the credit variable. So we are checking for some constraints that the credit is null or the credit is less than zero or greater than 16 that cannot happen for a student. With the alert function, we can actually alert the user or given message to the user in a JavaScript that you are doing something wrong or something need to be corrected. Now we have closed the script and the head. That means the JavaScript, we have added it to our HTML. Next part goes with the HTML body part. Now I am creating a course that for a student getting the course and the credits. So I'm getting the action as a create course on submit we will use the on submit that the form or the part of this data that they will submit now the return type of the validate function we will use an on submit if it is true that means the result lies between 0 and 16 credit other than that it is false Now just with a normal HTML code, we will display all the result, then close the form, close the body, close the HTML. So this is one example of a client-side scripting. Now, in, nowadays, a wave has got some various features that is embedded into the JavaScript from the client side as well as the server side a feature combinedly known as Ajax. Well, Ajax provides some of the features other than the basic servlet support that are destroying or deploying the server or giving in the client side, there are many restriction or we can put to this DOM standard. Say for an example, often the website we use, we can face this type of problem while filling up the form that until and unless you have selected a country, you are not allowed or all the states option are not displayed to it. That means according to the country, the state will be get input to that particular filled state. And after that you have selected the state, you will be given all the cities to the state. So the form that using one information on a combo box will give the feed to another input to another combo box is a great feature used by Ajax. We also use the VRML that is a virtual reality markup language which is based on the HTML but had got some exciting features in it like the combination of Ajax or having a CSS and XML binding to it and which gives a virtual reality. That means that is not present in reality, but it gives a virtual sense of having this. So virtual reality markup language can be used to perform all this task in the web applications. 
So that is all for the sublets and JSP. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.